guys and welcome on in for today's video where I'm going to show you how you can outline an image in GIMP and it's really helpful for creating YouTube thumbnails if you want an image to stand out. So for this example, I'm going to bring in a nice PNG cutout image of a SpongeBob SquarePants and what I'm going to do in this example is show you how to get a border around SpongeBob but also beyond that, how to create a little shadow effect as well to make it really pop and stand out. So now that we have our image that we're going to create that outline for, over on the layer that has that image, we're gonna right click to open up this menu and we're gonna do an alpha selection. So we're gonna click on that. And when you click alpha selection, it's gonna create this outline around your image. Now we need to grow that alpha selection. So to do that, we're gonna right click on our image and that opens up this menu. We're gonna to go to select and then click grow. And in this box, this is how many pixels that this alpha selection is going to grow beyond your image. The larger number that you type in here, the further away it's going to be. We're going to leave it right at 35 pixels. So I'm going to click OK. And you can see that this alpha selection has now grown 35 pixels away from my SpongeBob. Now we're going to be doing a white outline. So we need to add a new layer. So we're going to go over here on the side to our layers, right click and then do add layer and then click OK. And then we're gonna pull this layer below our SpongeBob image. And there's a couple of ways that we can go about putting in this outline. The first way is just clicking the paint bucket and then clicking on our SpongeBob here. And you can see that it now has this white outline around our SpongeBob image. And just to show you what this actually looks like when we take SpongeBob out of here, it's really just creating a white background behind the whole image. But then when we put SpongeBob back in there, it creates this nice outline effect. The other way that you can fill in other than just the paint bucket is doing edit and then you you can fill with the foreground or background color uh, doing that will have the same effect and of course you don't have to do white you can uh, click on the little color palette here and change it to whichever color that you want so now that we have this I'm going to show you how you can create a little shadow effect uh, to really make that image stand out even more so in the layer that we created for this white outline we're going to right click and then click select and then we're going to grow again and let's do an even bigger number. So let's do a 50 pixel. So you can see that this alpha selection is now 50 pixels away from uh, that white outline that we did. And we're going to create another layer. And then we're going to pull that layer below the white layer. And I want this background shadow effect to be black. So we're going to go over and change our uh, primary color here over from white to black. And then we are going to just paint bucket, fill it in. And then you can see now we have this black outline around the white outline that we are already created, but I don't want it to be a solid black line. I want it to be a bit blurred so it's a better shadow effect. Now to do this, we have to get rid of our alpha selection. So to do this, go to select and then click none. And that will get rid of that alpha selection and make sure you're on your black layer that you created go over to filters and then blur, Gaussian blur. And then you can just kind of drag the Gaussian blur over to the point where you like how the shadow effect looks. The further that you bring it, uh, kind of the fainter the shadowing effect ends up looking. If you have it closer, uh, then it looks more like a solid line. So we're just gonna have our uh, Gaussian blur here around 50 and then click OK. And that kind of creates this shadow effect behind that outline that we created around SpongeBob. So that's a way that you can really make your images pop, specifically if you're making thumbnails for a YouTube video. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Consider subscribing for more and I hope to see you guys back here for future videos.